Good evening. Welcome to the centenary celebration of the Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIEST Shippur. Today, we have the sixth lecture under our centenary lecture series. We have with us the Honorable Alumnus, Professor Gautam Bishash, to give us a lecture on the topic, Kaleidoscopic Flow in a Liquid Pool Due to Falling Drop. Professor Debashish Dotto, Professor of the Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIEST Shipwood. Sir, please take over. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Tonishta. Uh, good evening to all of you. I extend all of you a very hearty welcome on behalf of the Mechanical Engineering Department, IIEST Shipwood. I also take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks to Professor Gautam Bishash for being kind to have agreed to give a presentation on the occasion of this uh, series of centenary lectures. So before we start, I want to give a uh, formal introduction of Professor Gautam Bishash. Professor Gautam Bishash is presently a J.C. Bosch National Fellow at the Department of Mechanical Engineering of IIT Kanpur. And prior to this, he served as the director of IIT Guwahati and uh, director of uh, Central Mechanical Institute, Engineering Research Institute, CMERI, Durgapur. Professor Bishash completed his bachelor degree from this erstwhile uh, institute, BE College, Shippur, under Calcutta University in the year 1979. Subsequently, he completed his master's and PhD from IIT Kharagpur in 1981 and 1985. Uh, he was a Humboldt Fellow in Germany during 87-88 and an invited JSPS Fellow in Japan in 1994. He is a Fellow of the ASME, American Society of Mechanical Engineers. He was a guest professor at the University of Erlangen Nuremberg in 2002. And currently he is an associate editor of the well-known journal Computers and Fluids. Professor Gautam Bishar is a fellow of all three major science academies of India. That means INSA, Indian National Science Academy, IAS Bangalore, that is Indian Academy of Sciences, and National Academy of Sciences India, NASI. He is also a fellow of the Indian National Academy of Engineering and uh, Institution of Engin Engineers India. Uh, Dr. Bishash, uh, is uh, an alum a distinguished alumnus of our institute. He was awarded this in the convocation in the year 2013. He is also a distinguished alumnus of IIT Kharagpur, and he received this award in 2016. He is also a recipient of Institute Fellow of IIT Kanpur for the year 2020. Professor Bishash uh, is the recipient of uh, honorary doctorate by the National Institute of Technology, Agartala. And he was also conferred honorary doctorate by the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki in Greece in the year 2018. Professor Bishash uh, has achieved uh, many uh, laurels and he is a respected and very well-known academician and researcher and administrator. Uh, I remember that uh, during his tenure as the director of CMERI Durgapur, uh, he inspired many uh, research scientists to obtain their PhD degrees. And uh, that was a remarkable achievement. Now, currently, uh, the research group of Professor Bishash at IIT Kanpur has identified uh, the phenomenon of uh, Rayleigh Taylor instability during the bubble formation in film boiling. So this was a significant addition to the classical theory based on taylor helmholtz instability. So another seminal contribution of his group is identification of the regime of large bubble entrapment and its underlying physics during the complete coalescence of a falling drop on a liquid pool. So Professor Bishash is author of more than 100 publications in top tier international journals. So please hold your breath. I'm going to invite Professor Dr. Gautam Bishash 
to present the sixth centenary lecture and the topic is kaleidoscopic flow in a liquid pool due to falling drops. With this, I invite Professor Gautam Bishar. Professor Gautam Bishar, sir, please. <coughs> Professor Dutta, uh, I am really grateful to you for such a nice introduction. Uh, I am grateful to the organizers, to the head of the department, to the deans, uh, to the other faculty members for this invitation. I deem it uh, an, uh, a rare opportunity, uncommon fortune, to deliver uh, such a prestigious talk uh, of this illustrious institute, which has a great history and all of us know, I mean, large number of alumni, you know, who are uh, now sources of knowledge at different parts of the world. Uh, what I understand that few uh, uh, members from some research groups, uh, including uh, academic uh, and computational uh, analysis and computational research institute of uh, California uh, and few others uh, other academic people, they have, uh, I mean, joined uh, today's uh, lecture. While planning today's lecture, I was just uh, referring to it a little before, uh, probably such lectures uh, are uh, meant to be a more generic in nature, but uh, I thought uh, maybe some young students, maybe some young researchers would be there somewhere. Uh, so I uh, included uh, not many, but maybe you can say 15% of the slides are on mathematical development. So, but other than that, entire uh, talk is physical. And I have chosen a topic which is basically, you know, observed by all of us almost every day. So with this, uh, I will uh, try to go to my talk. Only thing is that I'm not very used to WebEx. I'm used to Zoom. So yesterday I had a training from Vidyut. Uh, so I hope I will not disappoint him. So I'm going to my talk. Vidyut, um, uh, uh, is it visible? Uh, yes, sir, it is visible. It is visible, no? So yes. I'm, I'm, I'm starting. Hmm? Okay, sir, yes, please, thank you. If the slides do not change, kindly give me, you know, a message, then I have to be careful. Hmm? Okay, sir, okay. Audio so, is not coming. Audio, so audio is not. Huh? The so audio, audio part. Audio part is not coming. Hmm. Just uh, you have to go back from from that sharing mode. Yes. I'm I'm I'm, I'm uh, okay. so. Uh, this is the problem every time. So, uh, should I, should I no, this will no, no, you have to go to the share mode again. No, no, I'm uh, okay, fine. I'm going there, He's sharing the screen. Yeah, okay. So, um
Now, I think I think when you are sharing the first sharing, uh, during that first sharing, the unmute part needs to be done. So, so I, I mean, Bidu, I am getting share content, share browser, share multimedia, share my uh, meeting window. Uh, sir, uh, did you uh, not window for uh, optimize motion and video? Mm, that is. Uh, I okay. So yes. opt optimize yes. motion and video. That is fine. It is there. And then screen screen share. Uh, screen one. But uh, before screen mm. one I shared, I have to um, uh, uh, okay. So uh, then I can share. Huh? Yes, yes, sir. Please share. Yes. Now it should come. So it has come. Uh, has it come? Yeah, the screen is visible. Sir. Screen is visible. Okay. Uh, now the sound. Party, welcome yes, to sir. all of you. Yes. It is such a delight Good. to deliver a talk on this topic, kaleidoscopic flow in a liquid pool due to falling drops. Now, when a drop, liquid drop, falls on a liquid pool, Slight changing it may up. splash, it may undergo partial yes, coil, yes. Okay. it may also cause complete coalescence. When the drop, liquid drop, falls on a solid surface, then the sessile drops are formed and you know, depending on the character of the surface, whether it is hydrophobic or hydrophilic, the drop takes a shape. Now, typical application of such, you know, studies are there in spray cooling, inkjet printing, and as we know, atmospheric and oceanographic sciences investigate phenomena concerning with rain formation and also interaction with uh, the raindrops, interaction of the raindrops with the surface of the ocean, which is very important controlling parameter of the environment. Now, a drop after falling it may float, it may bounce, it may coalesce, it may splash. All these are different regimes, can address different mechanistic viewpoints. It may form also a vortex ring and sometimes a jet emanates from the liquid surface producing drops of various sizes. Now, uh, when we uh, perform computational study, we try to model it. As you can see here, this is a drop of liquid one uh, is falling in a pool of liquid one, that is how we have written rho one is the density of the liquid, mu one is the density, viscosity of the liquid, and uh, rho two is the density of the surrounding fluid, and mu two is the viscosity of the surrounding fluid we may call the surrounding fluid as the matrix fluid or matrix liquid. And we can uh, see 
drop of a liquid is penetrating through the uh, surrounding matrix and then falling on the pole. And non-dimensional numbers that are very important in such studies are Onsorge number. Onsorge number uh, can be defined as the viscosity divided by root over rho. Sigma is the surface tension coefficient. D is the diameter of the drop. And when we write rho m, it's the mean density. And mu1 is for the liquid 1. And mu2 is for the fluid 2. The surrounding fluid can be in some cases, like, you know, more often than not, we find in chemical engineering, these applications, the surrounding liquids are, uh, yeah, surrounding fluid is a liquid, and that is immiscible liquid. And, uh, you know, most of the common examples, we get, of course, uh, surrounding fluid as, uh, you know, uh, gas, and very common is uh, air, as, uh, I mean, getting air as the uh, surrounding fluid. Uh, so, OH2 is mu2 divided by root over rho m sigma d. Bond number, this is, you know, difference between two densities, rho1 minus rho2 into d square g gravitational acceleration divided by sigma. And attitude number, this is again rho1 minus rho2, difference of that divided by 2 into rho m. Rather, we can say that this rho m is rho 1 plus rho 2 by 2. So, uh, this is called attitude number. Uh, now, when we analyze such flows, the major tool that is used uh, is uh, called uh, volume of fluid method. Volume of fluid method is basically advection of uh, basically volume fraction of the liquid through the media. When the volume fraction is uh, or the liquid void fraction, it may be called as volume fraction also rho minus rho g divided by rho l minus rho g. And rho g is the density of gas and rho l is the density of liquid. This colored space is filled with liquid and uh, rest of the space is filled with gas. But we can also find when we cast a uh, grid on it that some grids are neither fully occupied by liquid nor are they fully occupied by gas or uh, the um, uh, air. So those are basically uh, cells having the fractional void fraction, quite obvious. So, alpha equal to 0 is gas, alpha equal to 1 is liquid, and alpha between 0 and 1 is basically a two-phase cell. Now, in such methods, we also deploy level set method, which is a very well-known method discovered by famous mathematician, Professor Stanley Osher, and this is basically, you know, when uh, free surface flows take place, that means flows of different fluids and their boundary, I mean, interface is not fixed. It gets decided and the interface is defined by a sine function. And this sine function is a small negative value for one fluid, small positive value for another fluid, and zero is basically for the interface. This, uh, when we apply uh, this 
level set method or VOF method. At the background of it, we use uh, Young's method of piecewise linear interface construction. As you can see that this is a space occupied by some liquid, colored liquid, and it can be represented by piecewise linear elements. And then all these piecewise linear elements, that means those are basically interface cells. And uh, in those cells, if we say some region is occupied by liquid, some region is occupied by vapor or gas, then uh, what we, the primarily for the identification of the interface, we have to find out the uh, normal on the interface and the offset distance of the interface from the center of the cell. And this surface normal is calculated from the direction cosines, which are calculated from the void fractions of the cell of interest and the neighboring cells. And from the direction cosines, we get the surface normal and also this offset distance from the center of the cell is calculated. And then uh, we apply in an algorithm which is called Elvira, least square volume of interface reconstruction algorithm. This is basically a you know, makes this piecewise linear interface, piecewise linear uh, segments continuous. That means piecewise linear interfaces in each cell. It, this Elvira algorithm makes those piecewise linear segments continuous. Uh, as we can see here, that if the dotted line is the uh, uh, curved line, then at each cell, this uh, function is minimized to match the dotted line through the piecewise linear segment in each cell. So, at, as I mentioned earlier, that having done that can define the gaseous region, entire gaseous region with a small negative value, entire liquid region with a small positive value and zero at the interface. And then we recalculate the surface normal, which is given by grad phi by modulus of grad phi, this level set function, and the curvature is minus divergence of the surface normal. Then we calculate the Navier-Stokes equations and Navier-Stokes equations are rewritten on the basis of volume fraction or void fraction based density and void fraction based viscosity. We can see this is volume fraction based density, volume fraction based viscosity, and it is also augmented by another term which arises out of the surface tension. And all pre free surface flows, that means wherever multiple streams are flowing, their interfaces are typically calculated based on this term and here the surface tension force plays a major role. And uh, this uh, interface force, we can have two components. One is normal component, another is tangential component. And tangential component, if we do not have surface tension gradient or temperature variation along the interface, usually the tangential force is uh, can be neglected. Normal force 
uh, is uh, always to be accounted for and of course uh, the tangential force also becomes important when there is temperature variation uh, along the interface and we know uh, these are uh, called this uh, surface tension gradient driven flows are called marangoni convection this is this calculation is uh, in absence of marangoni convection here we have only the normal force and the normal force is also convoluted by using delta dirac function all of us know surface tension force is force per unit length in order to convert it force per unit area and you know have this term commensurate with the dimension of other terms you know it is convoluted by delta dirac function uh, that means at the interface only it is activated and elsewhere it is zero and then uh, what we do uh, interface we redefine because uh, uh, you know for little more uh, precise calculation instead of uh, small negative values we assign the zone which we assign small negative value may be the air zone or vapor zone we assign zero value there and enter liquid zone where we assign again a small positive value we assign one and in between zero and one we use basically heaviside function and then we again recalculate the interface by using this heaviside function based density and heaviside function based viscosity. So the overall algorithm is uh, we use staggered grid, uniform grid spacing, finite difference discretization, the convective terms of momentum equation are discretized using essentially non-oscillatory scheme of Professor Stanley Osher, very well-known scheme, ENO scheme, and other terms are usually central difference scheme. Pressure velocity iteration is performed by biconjugate gradient method by <coughs> CG stab we have written recently or not recently quite some for quite some time we have changed so for some problems we have changed this by cg stab based pressure velocity calculation into basically algebraic multi grid based pressure velocity uh, calculation called hypre and this hypre is uh, open source software which we have been able to install and uh, uh, get its uh, benefit to our algorithm, to our program. The numerical scheme is based on explicit time adv advancement. Based on the velocity field at the new time step, a coupled second order operator split advection scheme is used for basically advecting the void fraction uh, so this then the algorithm is tested on several model problems one such model problem is given uh, one circle basically uh, rotation thousand time rotation in the anti-clockwise direction then its shape becomes like this we can see at the background then again we give clockwise rotation and see whether we get back the circuit. Then uh, at the interface between two immiscible liquid, uh, we uh, perturb the interface and monitor the basically amplitude of uh, fluctuation 
at a given point. And then we compare that with our uh, you know, numerical scheme or numerical method. Our uh, analytical solution is available. Professor Andreas Prosperity's analytical solution is very well known. We have validated that. Then the third validation is basically a heavier liquid kept on a lighter liquid by a separating plate and suddenly that separating plate is withdrawn and the heavier liquid penetrates into the lighter liquid. Here we can see the penetrating fronts and this is a very well known solution of Professor Rudman. We validated that solution with our uh, solutions which were which was obtained uh, which were obtained by using our algorithm now let us see if a drop falls on a liquid pool what can happen we can see here the formation of liquid column finally pinch off and formation of secondary drop then the secondary drop oscillates with oblate and prolate shape in the air and then again it touches the liquid pool. Some liquid is again drained out and a tertiary drop is created. Then tertiary drop again slowly touches the interface. Quaternary drop in this particular case we cannot see but it is possible to see you know further sister drops or daughter drops at the uh, as such uh, you know quite a few investigators have obtained eight stage cas such cascade and whatever we showed in the earlier animation those are basically computational results and these are different snapshots of the computational results and you can see here the secondary uh, drop formation, here the tertiary drop formation, corresponding Unsurge number, bond number, atode numbers are given. This particular case was basically taken from an experiment of Honey and Kavepur, and this was basically a drop of 1.2 millimeter is falling through the air air medium, a drop of water of 1.2 millimeter falling through the air medium and the uh, experimentalists, uh, the investigators, uh, Professor uh, Kavepur's uh, group, they got secondary drop as 6 point, uh, 0.64 millimeter and tertiary drop as point 3 2 millimeter. We have also got a ratio of primary and secondary drop uh, as secondary to primary drop as 0.54 and tertiary to secondary drop as 0.47. Now we'll show another case. This also we have taken from an experiment of uh, Professor uh, Mason. Uh, and uh, there basically uh, a drop uh, of benzene uh, and drop is bigger drop, 6 millimeter drop. It is falling through uh, basically water medium and uh, we'll be able to see again the column formation and then the column will be a, will undergo uh, another instability which is called Raleigh Plato instability and two drops will sister drops will be formed they will again merge in the uh, you know uh, while floating and fall on the uh, liquid pool we uh, repeated another experiment famous experiment of Thorotson where uh, a drop of 18% polyethylene oxide in aqua solution uh, is falling through decayed medium and you can see here 
it is complete coalescence, but you know, a small decay drop is uh, captured or arrested within the pool. So uh, uh, now the major uh, thrust of this part of the study was basically to finding out the regime for partial coalescence. And what we found that if we uh, account for the primary drop diameter and the ratio of secondary to primary drop diameter, then there is some minimum drop diameter below which basically the even the column formation takes place, but pinch of doesn't take place. So the secondary drop is not formed. And there is some upper limit of the primary drop above which the drop momentum is such that complete coalescence takes place. So uh, this upper limit and lower limit, uh, lower limit and upper limit, and then in between uh, different uh, diameter ratios of primary and secondary drop, we uh, calculated from our computations and uh, compared with uh, a very uh, well-known experiment of chain and found extremely good match. Now, this criteria for partial coalescence that was to be obtained. Uh, Charles and Mason, they suggested that the partial coalescence was due to Rayleigh Plato instability, whereas Blanchetti and Bigoni, this is a nature paper, they have explained that formation of capillary waves and a capillary pool is basically uh, responsible for secondary drop formation. Now, we uh, consolidated all the views and explained uh, the uh, complete scenario. Here we can see uh, following uh, Blanchetti and uh, Bigoni's hypothesis, formation of capillary waves and capillary waves, you know, are you know, progressing towards the top, top at different time instants. And finally, the, uh, the, uh, there is a pull when the capillary wave reaches at the top. But at the same time, you know, this uh, horizontal velocity contour and vertical velocity contour, uh, we have uh, plotted uh, so that, you know, we can understand the relative importance of the horizontal momentum and the vertical momentum. And we can see when the capillary waves reach at the top, the verti I mean, uh, vertical momentum, negative vertical momentum and negative horizontal momentum, they are also at their peak. And then the pinch off takes place. From our study, the important criteria uh, for partial coalescence is the increasing horizontal momentum of the drop relative to the vertical momentum. This can be accomplished either by changing the viscosity or by changing the gravity within limits. Next, I will uh, highlight another uh, major uh, we can say uh, discovery of this study that at different time instants, the interface which defines basically the uh, partial coalescence, that means the formation of the uh, column and then pinch off of the column and formation of the secondary drop these interface shapes at different instant of time we can record but if 
we plot them through proper parametric adjustment, then the interfaces at different instants, they collapse on a single curve. This transformation relationship has to be understood. Here the radial direction is r by d, non-dimensionalized with respect to drop diameter. The axial direction is non-dimensionalized with respect to again drop diameter, z star. So r star is r by t, z star is z by t. And t star is basically time by tv. And this tv is basically, we can say, or we can see that this is viscous time. So this, if the time is uh, non-dimensionalized using the viscous time and then we plot basically z star divided by t star into alpha and this axis is r star power beta r star power beta z star by t star uh, t star in alpha and we have found out also alpha equal to 2 and beta equal to 1. So this is called self-similarity of the interface profile. So, so this self-similarity during column formation at the transition zone, this was depicted by our study. Having discussed about the partial coalescence, we will address uh, some other attributes of falling drops, uh, for example, complete coalescence and few other stages uh, leading to the splashing from com complete coalescence to splashing. Now, all these stages we can see here, we have been able to compute and then we have animated. Uh, you can see extreme left is the partial coalescence, then complete coalescence, then uh, small thick jet formation after complete coalescence, then small thick jet formation with droplet, thin jet, large bubble entrapment, small bubble entrapment, uh, here also we will be able to see basically jet formation and together with jet formation we will see basically the uh, bubbles also like you can see uh, drops with the uh, uh, long thick jet uh, we, we can see drops with the small uh, here also we can see small drops so different uh, i mean uh, bubbles and drops we can see bubbles are basically when the surrounding air is trapped bubbles are formed and then you know when the jet emanates we can see the drops are also shed from the jets so you know these have uh, different dynamical scenario. Here uh, we can see an experiment. This experiment was done by, as I mentioned, uh, uh, my collaborator, Professor Ang Bang Wang in uh, National Taiwan University. Uh, here we can see that uh, basically after the drop impact, a crater is formed, this is inside the liquid pool, uh, you know, from bottom, and then uh, the crater is closed, but the uh, a small air bubble is trapped, and then this air bubble is, uh, is slowly rising up. We again computed exactly the same case with the similar parameters, and it is little fast though, 
we can see, you know, crater creation, crater is getting closed and a, a bubble, air bubble is being trapped. So these are different facets. We focus specifically on a uh, typically, you know, a uh, phenomenon which is called large bubble entrapment. And we did definitely, you know, try to do some uh, contribution there. Now, this is basically a velocity versus drop diameter map. These are called regime map. And this was developed by Pompre and Elmore. You can see this axis is velocity. This is the drop diameter. You can see here, this is the terminal velocity of the drop. And this is the zone where regular entrapment of bubbles take place. This is the zone called Messler entrapment. Basically, no repeated bubbles, very tiny bubbles. Uh, are entrapped under the drop, underneath the drop, the between the uh, when the drop is coalescing, the uh, drop boundary and the liquid pool or water boundary. In between, you know, very tiny drops are uh, tiny bubbles are trapped, and this is called irregular entrapment zone, and this is a small zone where. Pompre and Elmore observed formation of large bubbles. And around the same time, Oguj and Prosperity, Professor Prosperity, they conducted uh, this study uh, and they also supported this scenario. And additionally, you know, they, uh, you know, transferred this data on Weber number, fruit number plane. And this is a uh, you know, line uh, showing the uh, large bubbles, you know, zones of large bubbles. And this is the line showing the, you know, a limiting case for small bubbles. Limiting cases for the small bubbles. Now, this diagram uh, together with all other experimental studies were collated very nicely using a slightly different scaling law of velocity and diameter by Professor Wang. And he gave different names. His uh, S regime is basically regular bubble entrapment regime. And here uh, he considered the uh, drops of uh, basically 4 or 3.5 to 5.5 millimeter diameters. And uh, the bubbles, those who are trapped in this regime, they were typically below 1 millimeter. And the bubbles uh, uh, that uh, were found to be trapped by Oguj and Prosperity or Pompre and Elmore. You know, that zone is this. He rescaled it, so zone looks a circular zone. Uh, and, uh, but when he did experiments after redefining or rather replotting the zone, he got large bubble entrapment outside this circle too. And by large bubble, you know, he means or we mean that typically maybe five millimeter and above for, you know, maybe four to five millimeter, 5.5 millimeter, 5, 4.8, some such drops. The entrapped bubble size here is comparable, it is also in the range of five millimeter. Now we will show basically the entrapment of air bubble. You can see that drop is falling. And after the, you know, uh, drop, you can see falls a crater 
is created and this crater is basically full of air so this air bubble is trapped and this was computed by us and our computational results we put together for uh, animation and these are the, uh, this is the animated result you can see the mechanism of large bubble being entrapped and interaction of large bubble and the uh, uh, free surface so you know whatever was observed in the experiments of professor wang uh, everything was repeated here and additionally i will make a remark for everyone that uh, professor wang got a beautiful vortex ring as such you know getting such vortex ring within the in the inside the liquid pool uh, rather capturing uh, is quite difficult and colors are usually used uh, or different dyes are used to capture such rings but here with simple halogen lamp he could get he could capture uh, this vortex ring it's a toroidal ring so two dimensional view is looking like this now we will look at the results of other results of large bubble entrapment a drop of 5.65 millimeter diameter with a velocity of 0.953 meter per second uh, which means wave number 75 and fruit number 16 these are the sequence of events at different time instants basically uh, we have presented our computational results and compared it with the at the corresponding same time instant with the experimental results of professor wang and his group and here uh, we can see again you know the sequence of events and uh, professor wang uh, we have uh, striking similarity but here uh, we can see that drop is trapped inside the bubble some liquid is trapped inside the bubble this was not very clear with uh, professor wang's results but later on uh, we got confirmation of this from uh, experiments of professor thoraval uh, which was published in prl so the vertical jet at the center and the uh, drop inside the bubble uh, both are salient features of this set of experiments and numerics then we again computed diameter uh, initial drop diameter 4.42 millimeter velocity 1.136 meter per second Weber number 83 fruit number 30 and these are at different microseconds you can see 4.8 microsecond 8 microsecond 11.2 microsecond 14.4 microsecond and you know corresponding experimental results and here uh, the special uh, observation is that which was first you know sensitized uh, i mean this observation i mean scientific world was sens sensitized by this observation of Professor Wang, entrapment of a large bubble together with a small bubble and uh, with very high grid resolution uh, around 6 million grid points, we could also capture this uh, large bubble as well as a very small tiny bubble. Now, uh, when uh, we uh, with these with our results we uh, tried to modify the VD map of Professor Oguj and Prosperity or Professor Pompre and Elmore uh, and uh, we did uh, more than 200 computations uh, cases to identify this zone and uh, the basically uh, these red circles are our computational results and when we transfer this on to fruit number Weber number plane 
our red circles are seen here. We can also see blue squares, which are experimental results of Professor Wang. So we can see, you know, complete confirmation of our uh, numerical results. Our observations uh, were, as I said, we used 6 million grade points for each case. And this is the zone, this small zone. This was the earlier uh, you know, boundary of large bubble entrapment defined by Pumphrey and Enmore, Oguj and Prosperity, and few other experimentalists. Now, our results, uh, our computations, together with Professor Wang's, uh, uh, Professor Wang, uh, his student was Pei Shun Sai, uh, and, uh, you know, our student was now his faculty professor. Uh, Hirono Deka. Uh, so uh, together uh, we could uh, re-establish uh, the boundary of the large bubble entrapment zone on the regime map. Now, uh, little more towards the mechanism of large bubble formation. Now, uh, entrapment. So basically, when a drop falls and creates, initiates a vortex ring. This vortex ring finally rolls and creates a roll jet. Now, this roll jet is the nucleus of this large bubble entrapment. But uh, formation of this roll jet uh, is often hindered by basically uh, formation of ejector sheet. If, there can be formation of ejector sheet, then roll jet doesn't form. We get little crown like this. Or uh, this is not complete splashing. This is a crown with the complete coalescence. Now, also, there can be formation of lamella, which is little, you know, thick liquid jet uh, as compared to ejecta. Then also, uh, large bubble entrapment does not take place. So here we have uh, been able to show it in a more convincing way. And also the drop shape has some role in it. If the drop shape is oblate, we have expressed the aspect ratio as 0.7. That means uh, minor axis by major axis shape is tending towards, you know, uh, ellipse uh, oblate shape and you can see formation of ejecta and finally the cavity or the crater is created but it is not closed. For spherical drop, perfectly spherical drop also, lamella sheet, lamella forms and finally the crater may not close. Here the aspect ratio is 1. It is uh, circular or in a spherical drop. And finally, we used a prolate shaped drop and prolate with the aspect ratio 1.37. That means this axis by this axis, it is 1.37. Shape is prolate and we can see formation of uh, basically a roll jet. And finally, this roll jet induces a liquid bridge from the periphery, from all around the periphery of the cavity, and that merges at the axis and covers basically the entrapped air, forming a large bubble. This particular case, diameter was 5 millimeter, velocity was 1 meter per second, Weber number 69, fruit number 20.4. Here, uh, we can uh, show also very comprehensively formation of large bubble entrapment or entrapment of large bubble has been shown. As you can see, the uh, basically uh, from the periphery, this liquid tongue uh, is uh, going to meet. After meeting, two jets are formed one outward jet, one inward jet, and inward jet, this liquid jet inside the air, trapped 
air bubble. This is called Worthington jet, right? And then uh, we can see the formation of or entrapment of a large bubble. And within that, again, a small liquid drop is trapped. And uh, here we can see the complete pinch of of the uh, trapped cavity or of complete pinch of of the entrapped air bubble, large bubble. Now this pinch of time uh, is a parameter then. Pinch of time versus velocity, that this can be plotted. Higher impact velocity produces stronger vertical flow near the interface and the vortex start early interaction with the interface leading to early pinch off. So with the uh, increased velocity, we can see that pinch of time reduces. And here, of course, uh, on a non-dimensional time scale, pinch of time is nearly constant. And here uh, we can see uh, our uh, computational results for four millimeter drop, five millimeter drop, and six millimeter drop. And this is experimental result for 5.65 millimeter drop. Now uh, we will discuss about another very interesting, very interesting zone. Uh, we may not get time to complete this, but uh, this has many applications, including defense applications. Here, uh, uh, a single drop is falling. You can see a cavity. And these drops we can create by the injection mechanism that uh, this can be a train of drops. In, in the case of train of drops, one cavity will be nested with another cavity, will be nested with yet another cavity, and that cavity shape will be like this. This will be the cavity shape when a jet falls on the water surface and you know with sufficient velocity and jet penetrates and this is basically we can see a three millimeter metallic ball that is dropped so the cavity created due to a solid sphere so you know all these you know cavities they have some you know interrelationship but probably today let us attempt we may not reach that far now these nested cavities uh, have uh, amazing you know similarity with uh, the matryoshka doll as you know matryoshka doll is famous russian doll and where each one has a series of similar but smaller drop smaller dolls inside. So this is the largest doll. You will get, you know, uh, inside this, this doll. If you open, you will get this doll. And finally, you know, uh, a doll of this size. So now uh, you will see that this, uh, the cavity, inside the cavity, uh, yet another cavity inside that, you know, just like a Matryoshka doll, can be formed and these are called matryoshka cavity. So we have done some computational work uh, with matryoshka cavity and these are the drops. This you can see the first drop, the second drop, third drop, fourth drop, etc. These are the Reynolds, I mean the parametric uh, definitions. Reynolds number, rho, u is the velocity, d is the diameter, rho is the density, mu is the viscosity. Now the cavity length that is given by n minus 1, n is the number of drops uh, multiplied by u, that is the velocity, divided by the f, divided by f, f is the frequency. It's a very interesting study, but it may not be possible to complete the full presentation on this part of the crater dynamics because of paucity of time. Uh, we'll only take up some salient features rather very interesting features for the young mind. Now, as I mentioned, uh, if the temporal frequency of the multi 
droplet stream is high enough, sequential droplets hitting the free surface in the same place create nested cavities. With each successive droplet forming a uh, droplet, for, with each successive droplet forming a cavity at the base of the uh, uh, preceding series of nested cavities. So, uh, Professor Truscott named this as Matryoshka cavity after the, uh, you know, Russian nested dolls. So, we will show our computational results and here we have used on uh, 60 drops and frequency is 290 kilohertz, velocity is 30 meter per second and drop diameter is uh, 40 micrometer. This is, these are micron size drop, my, uh, micro drops. You can see cavity formation, the pinch off of the cavity and basically the cavity finally assumes a shape which is the outcome. Now this study basically you know in order to establish our, our results first we did some comparisons with the uh, very well known work of Professor Bauweis where our Reynolds number was 1200, Weber number was 395 and finally, length of the cavity, non-dimensional length of the length of the cavity was 152. You can see drop diameter 40 micron, velocity 30 meter per second, frequency 290 kilohertz, and number of drops 60. And these are the comparisons. The red line outside red line is our computational result, and the uh, field in space is basically results of uh, Professor Bauweis. Uh, and uh, these are A, B, C, D, E, F. These are uh, snapshots taken uh, at every 40 microseconds interval. Then again, we did yet another comparison, which is, uh, you know, which uh, this case study was uh, basically for drop diameter of 40 micron, a velocity of 26.75 meter per second, frequency again 290 kilohertz, and number of drops 85. And we can see we have found out the penetration depth. And you can see finally penetration depth becomes uh, asymptotic. And this is our computational result by the, you know, presented by the line. And the dots are basically the results of Bauer et al. So we had ex extremely nice comparison. Now related to physics, what can be said that momentum is transferred into the pool from the impacting drop. Then the liquid in the pool moves outward in all directions uh, from the uh, point of impact. Expansion of the crater and finally, retraction of the crater, that is the characteristics of a single crater. Velocity is highest at the start of the expansion stage. The second droplet hits the base of the crater formed by the impact of the first droplet and produces another crater at its base. The penetration increases continuously due to continuous impact and finally, it produces a deep cavity. This has plenty of applications in radio detection and ranging, uh, which are primarily you know, used in defense. Now, I will show uh, experiments of Professor uh, Truscott. Uh, he used, we used micro drops, but he used uh, normal drops, I mean not micro drops, uh, usual drops. Uh, you can see drop of 2.17 millimeter and velocity 6.59 meter per second, frequency 1500 hertz. And uh, we'll be able to see his beautiful experimental results and uh, we'll see that nested cavities 
forming a bigger cavity and pinch off of the cavity somewhere here. I can play it again uh, just to identify uh, the nested cavities and uh, how the elongated cavity is formed and how pinch off takes place. And uh, again, uh, probably it is worthwhile to repeat our results because our results were because of micro drops and uh, we can also uh, see that uh, the formation of the cavity through the nest uh, elongated cavity through the nested cavities pinch off is taking place somewhere here and after the pinch off the cavity gets elongated further because of impact of the drops inside the hollow cavity and then the cavity assumes a final shape. There can be shallow cavities if the number of drops are less. Here we have studied, you know, specifically something else with uh, 13 micro drops and we can see uh, the way the, you know, crater is formed and this uh, cavity also get closed, gets pinched off and uh, a large uh, air bubble is entrapped. This is almost like large bubble entrapment and then it starts interacting with the free surface and we can see the subsequent interaction for a shallow cavity with 13 micro drops created by a train of smaller number of drops. So basically when we compare deep cavity and shallow cavity, we can see the differences with the opening of the cavity mouth, closing the cavity, cavity mouth, that is pinch of, I mean, pinch of time, and here also the mechanism of opening the cavity mouth, and finally closing the cavity mouth. This is for shallow cavity, this is for deep cavity. So finally, we will conclude what we could discuss today within our limited time. When liquid drop impacts on a liquid liquid or liquid gas interface for very small drops and for very large drops, the phenomena of partial coalescence do not occur within the range of partial coalescence. So partial coalescence has a range that we have shown. Uh, the processes can be divided into three regimes depending on different forces, namely viscous force, surface tension force, inertia force, and of course buoyancy force. These are the different forces. Partial coalescence occurs in liquid or a liquid air medium for uh, low velocity and as the velocity increases uh, we can see transition from partial coalescence to complete coalescence. As the waiver number is increased, that means the velocity is increased, the phenomena which occur are partial coalescence, complete coalescence, small thick jet with or without secondary drop thin jet, large bubble with thin jet, small bubble with thick jet, and long thick jet. We have seen on a single uh, slide all these variants. Each one deserves special attention and special study. Large bubble entrapment is observed in a wide range on the VD map. The regime of large bubble entrapment on the VD map and on the Weber number, fruit number map has been identified. The shape of the drop must be prolate at the time of impact for large bubble entrapment to take place. Sometimes the large bubble is accompanied by the entrapment of a small bubble. The vortex ring which is generated near the interface, later pulls and curls up the interface to form the roll jet. The roll jet merges 
at the central axis to entrap a large bubble inside the liquid pool. The vorticity strength must be strong enough to make the roll jet merge at the center line for the entrapment of large bubble. The emergence of ejector sheet merged with lamella prevents the separation and penetration of vortex ring onto the pool, which in turn prevents the entrapment of large bubble. The impact of a high speed micro droplet train on a liquid pool creates a deep crater. The deep depth of the crater can be increased by continuous impact of multiple micro droplets. Such impact of a train of high speed micro droplets creates a deep cavity. The cavity mouth motion has an expansion stage and collapse stage. The radial movement of the neck shows power law behavior in both expansion and collapse stage. Because of paucity of time, this part, this power law behavior, we could not show it here today. Uh, in the case of a shallow cavity, the pinch of time of the cavity decreases with the increase in number of droplets in the droplet train. However, the pinch of time is independent of the number of droplets in the droplet train for a deep cavity. My acknowledgements are due to all my co-researchers, Dr. Gaurav Tomar of IISC, Dr. Bunhi Re of IIT Delhi, Dr. Hirono Deka, IIT Dharwar, Professor Amores Talal, IIT Guwahati, Professor Am Angbang Wang, NTU Taiwan, Professor Stefan Jaliski, Sorbonne University, France, Professor uh, Tad Traskot, Utah State University, and Professor S.W.J. Welch, University of Colorado, USA. Thank you. Thank you for your interest. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for uh, sharing with us such a nice presentation and uh, state of the art research with us. And I hope this has evoked a lot of interest among the members of the August gath gathering and August audience. So I now request uh, from the uh, members that you can share your views. You can ask questions, you can make comments, whatever you like to do. So it's now open for discussion. That is not right. We are feeling hungry. This is a very frontline work since I find the reference. Sir, you are not audible. Hey. Hey. Uh, Tom, I had a question. Uh, IIT Kanpur, high speed photography, even ultra high speed photography, is it working? Uh, that is with uh, Professor Venkit Naran now. Uh, mm -hmm. It has been, you know, it is working. It has been augmented also. So are you using that also in your experiment? Because this will be ultra high speed. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to uh, I'll, I'm, I'm keeping in mind that we started the a bouncing drop in the first time. We had a lot of photographs. So, I told Professor Vinkit Naran that we did a lot of work. We did a lot of 
একজন পিডিএফ আছে প্রফেসর রাজেন্দ্র মুনিয়ান বলে সো ডক্টর রাজেন্দ্র মুনিয়ান বলে তো আমরা ওইটাতে লাগাবো তাহলে ওটা চেষ্টা করব probably for uh, year no and adapting that for water will be very difficult you know or you know whether you will be able to spare that which so, is sir, that is only depends on uh, the what kind of particles you are using in air it's a smoke in water there will be some other kind of things like a small bubble all this so uh, the instrument remains the same sure then we can we, not only we, you can get flow visualization here you can quantify the absolutely. flow like the magnitude etc etc so starting this kind of things with the pib or even high speed pib it's is the best option to do chubroto so we'll try definitely we'll try you know if uh, you become partner nothing like that i mean well, i would love to do that do not uh, sure Actually, sure the the setup is very simple in this case you know we'll do i will try definitely thank okay. you uh, uh, professor uh, bishash i have a question uh, my name is kamal sarkar i'm 68 batch uh, mechanical yes sir, yes, sir. Uh, all your work looks like it's mostly with the liquid liquid uh, liquids uh, air type of uh, gases type of combination have you basically the answer could be simple yes and no type then i'll make a comment they have you done any work in the area of liquid solid interaction and effect of temperature and viscosity and density the reason i'm asking this thing nowadays there is a huge uh, research interaction going on in the so called 3d printing in the 3d printing what happens is that we are making the part layer by layer the challenge in 3d printing is the quality of parts the quality of parts is compromised because the thermal stress and interface stress are basically changing the structure and the property of the part we can never get anywhere close to the actual productive uh, production part as we can get it for conventional uh, machining so that's a challenge in 3d printing so if you know somebody or if you are interested in that area it will have immense interest and it will have immense impact because 3d printing is really moving very fast and all over the place in every industry so that we really of uh, interest for common people Yeah, have you done any work or are you interested in that area or do you know anybody who is working in that area and sir so to say it is you know as you said 3d printing is uh, definitely one of the uh, major uh, paradigm of um, additive manufacturing it is being you know discussed and uh, nurtured everywhere uh, what i am trying to do or i have tried to do uh, results are not published uh, as yet because we have not completed all the things we are i mean it's uh, you know ongoing uh, work basically that is uh, drop bouncing from the solid surface super hydrophobic surface so we are trying to create super hydrophobic surface and obviously you know Uh, whether a drop can bounce or spread uh, it depends on the you know uh, uh, contact angle if the high, sur surface can be really super hydrophobic that means contact angle increases 150 or so then it bounces and we have got some computational results also but that is what you know i have done directly or indirectly you can say 
which has some link to uh, this area. Otherwise, I do not know, uh, I mean, I do not work myself on this area, but I know many people who are working in the related area. I, I think the challenge in this whole scenario is that effect of temperature and viscosity and density that is changing fast. So that is the one of the thing I don't know how difficult it is uh, in terms of computational model. I mean, it is, uh, it can be handy, but obviously there are challenges. So since I have not worked directly on those aspects, uh, one has to see. And this is known, uh, as you rightly said, uh, today it is called 3, 3D, 3D printing. Some 30 years back or 20 years back, uh, it used to be called rapid prototyping. Our material mm -hmm. has changed. It is metal today. And uh, it used to be resins in those days. But in, the, in that time also challenge was the same. Change in density and change in viscosity. These are very fast. And uh, you know that uh, creates the major hindrance in the surface finish of the product. So these are, you know, uh, I know the problems, but I do not work. Being a fluid dynamicist, I am not really, you know, I have not been uh, sort of induced in the field uh, very naturally. But whatever is my uh, area of interest that whether a drop can bounce from a solid surface, that part we have taken up and we are working on it. But this is definitely what you said, very, very important and interesting. And Amitabhuda knows, you know, many groups across the IIT system, they are working. Uh, exactly, you know, what they are doing, etc. Maybe Professor Amitabhuda, um, I mean, reviews, I mean, Ashokda may be knowing, uh, you know, uh, they, I do not really know. Uh, I mean, group of, uh, I mean, detailed up, I mean, uh, output of different groups across the uh, uh, institutes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Ashokda. Devashish, can I say something? Yes, yes, sir. Please go ahead. No, I would like to thank Sudip and Vidyut and others that you saw two faculty members of IIT Kanpur could know from this platform that they can interact. Shubrata and Gautam, they knew from this platform that they can interact within IIT Kanpur. Thank you. Ashokda, we are interacting. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ashokda, I mean, your observation is, uh, yes. you know, apparently correct, but uh, there is a reason because I was not in IIT Kanpur for, you know, last, no, I should not say last, I came back in 2019. So I was not there for 10 years. And in within that period, uh, Shubruto has created enormous, uh, you know, uh, amount of facilities. Now, after coming back, uh, whenever I got chance, uh, I interacted with Shubruto, even we have a common PhD student. But, uh, you know, what all Shubruto has, uh, in detail, I do not know really. I mean, you are right from that point of view. That yeah, yeah, it is right. No, no, I said it in a lighter vein that this centenary lecture series for which Sudip, Vidyut and others are working so hard are serving many purposes. Sure, sure, sure. Yes, sure. sure. No, I left in 2009. At that time, Subroto was always fighting for space. That I remember. Yes, yes, Dada. <laughs> now, uh, Ashokda, it is irony of fate. You know, now I am fighting for space. After, after coming it's back. nice to follow the interaction yeah, yeah. because I, I i i left my lab i left my quarters so after coming back in 2019 like a you know uh, young faculty member who just starts his career i am struggling for everything what happened to your cfd lab space which you had as soon as you came from Kharagpur? You had a big space at uh, CFD lab you met. Yeah, uh, that lab, uh, what happened since I was not here. So whoever was here, he used to ask me that, you know, some new faculty has come. 
and uh, uh, will he sit there and all such thing i always agree to everybody but finally that was converted into energy storage lab and uh, battery etc those uh, uh, you know energy storage related work that is being done my room is there my this room where i am sitting this is uh, in that which you help me or you were the you know main inspiration for creation so that lab is there and this my room is still in that lab but uh, you know uh, lab is uh, now a different lab and my students are sitting here and there in different places including uh, you know here uh, two three students uh, three students are sitting here and uh, rest are sitting one with shubrato another with bishak something like that no i i'll say perhaps uh, amitabh observation ta khanikta mane khanikta nai onektai shotti even uh, often i feel bad seeing the condition of cfd lad that that you and amita uda has created no i didn't create i only gave this space as the head of the department that giving this space is a big thing do not i have not done anything <laughs> Uh, any other any other question from the student uh, any research scholar if you are there no as a, as a student can i ask something yeah yeah i mean no, not student faculty anything you know please ask i mean it is it is a, and it is nice to a, a, this phenomena that when a drop falls on a liquid uh, and you have the phenomena of secondary uh, Droplet bouncing back or tertiary droplet bouncing back, and it has certain time, certain uh, you know uh, time uh, parameters. Are these experiments influenced by the volume of the liquid on which it is dropping? That means in a container you have a after all the liquid on which it is dropping, which has a diameter and has a liquid column. Now, will this dimension affect the result? when i drop say a 3 mm droplet from a particular height because the moment it drops it it disturbs the parent fluid on which it is dropping and disturbing means uh, some impact from the boundaries or from the bottom something so will the results or it is purely a uh, very in a very absolutely 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 because there are differences in responses depending on whether it is a shallow cavity or it's a deep or the pool is deep or shallow or moderate you know it is you know very very important but i you think will... it is something like semi infinite solid when you do stress analysis is it it go to are you treating these as semi infinite uh, so in, a, in a way it is that if it is a deep pool but if it is a shallow pool immediately there will be reflections from the bottom yes and interaction from with those reflections so if it is a shallow pool then you know uh, it uh, that reflection will uh, be very important and the dynamics will be different and that will be closer to the ground reality because if yeah. we assume that the depth is infinite infinite that means x is equal to 0 to infinity that that's more to solve the equations but if we take shallow cylindrical volume of liquid that will be closer to what happens in a uh, physical sort of situation yes but uh, you know beyond some depth it can be assumed as in infinite medium but okay. uh, you know up to some depth what you are saying is absolutely correct and the diameter of the cylinder uh, that uh, that uh, that has also a very very you know i would say notable uh, influence as such uh, immediate after the drop falls when the crater is created at the periphery you know the uh, 
there is a rise of you know water body and this is basically you know not only volume displacement because of capillary waves as such one of my former students who is a faculty in iit delhi now uh, professor bunni re uh, bunni uh, even in the uh, today's literature of course i am co-author of the paper but it, it was bunni's discovery he almost coined a, a phrase a, 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 she called it wave swell now wave swell related research really speaking has taken up after bunni's work it was published in jfm in 2015 now this wave swell shape that means the cavity boundary shape that is controlled by the outer periphery that means whether it's a square domain or circular domain or large domain you know depends on that this wave swell will be uh, you know control so that has definitely that has also importance devash is the i have a question i have a question maybe little embarrassing also uh, that oh, once i was doing phd on response of non linear systems under high frequency excitation i started in 2002 and completed in 2007 i had phd degree also but during this research study I came to know that some work is going on in IITs. So I wrote the faculties and the director also, but no, no material I received, not a single line reply also I received. But when I wrote to foreign universities, I got a bunch of paper within 15 days. So I would like to know whether the situation has improved or it is in the same condition. I'm Dr. T. I'm Dr. T. K. Singh, Tarun Kumar Singh. I work in Indian Wardas Factories after completing this Combined Engineering Service Examination, 1983. And retired as additional DG and member of Wardas Factory Board. With with due, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I with due respect to you. You know, this is uh, difficult to generalize IIT system, something like that. Because, you know, anybody writes for papers or anybody writes for references, I immediately send him. And these days it is, you know, by return mail usually I send. And, you know, when even, you know, the mail system was not so strong, I used to send, you know, whatever material I have, whether it is my own paper or anybody else's paper, or somebody is not finding a paper which is difficult in that place, but, you know, maybe easy in IIT system or, you know, somewhere. I used to collect and send. And today also I keep sending. So it depends on, you know, the person involved. So it's very unfortunate who really did not, give you a prompt reply or you know at least acknowledge your uh, letters or interact with you that is definitely undesirable but it's not common it it, it is a localized you know phenomenon yeah yeah sure 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 professor Vishas, thank you very much for reply. and i think uh, uh, the, if, please allow me a, allow me a minute at the end okay yeah yeah sure sure uh, and, and and this is not the um, uh, correct forum to raise this issue i believe no no it is okay, okay. i mean yeah, so, uh, we we had we are just discussing okay and, uh, okay. Uh, okay okay so i think uh, i i asked uh, no we did not receive any question from the students or research scholars so i think uh, no but the students or research scholars or anybody you know uh, yeah, yeah sure anybody yeah. i i really appreciate if there is you know any question any doubt you know it is a right place to discuss we'll take it up or if i cannot reply i will send you know maybe email reply or you know try to resolve it thank you very much thank you thank you uh dr ghosh professor ghosh yes yes Shudip, i think uh, thank you. we are at the end of this uh, so. yes i just need to give uh, thanks so on behalf of the department and on behalf of the centenary celebration committee, I must thank Professor Vishas for, for giving this 
Centenary Lecture on this forum. I should also thank the past speakers, uh, many of whom I find here today. Uh, and I, sh I must specifically mention Professor Ghosh. I mean, uh, his very presence uh, creates a lot of difference for us. Right? So thank you, sir. Uh, I must oh, also to, thank to others, to Professor Moldy. Sorry for a little interruption. Today you have, you know, uh, uh, Professor Ghosh, Professor Malik, uh, Achuddha, mm -hmm. Professor Bhattacharya, Purandar Bhattacharya, yes, and, yes. and uh, Professor and many, many of my people. past speakers, including that. <laughs> Dr. Bhattacharya, I got Kamanda also here. So yeah, it's really nice to see all my past speakers, even the future speakers are also here. Right? So thank you all very much. And I should also thank uh, Professor Devashil Dotto for hosting the session, leading the session, and making this interaction possible. And I should I would also request you to virtually hand over a certificate of appreciation to our honored speaker and the memento, the memento we have to arrange to send. So that's one point we have to take care of subsequently. So thank you. Thank you, Devasis, for leading the session. Thank you. And, and, and so, this is, uh, I think the certificate may once be shown once again. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the certificate the, we, are, the, we, are, we are sending digital copies, and we also have planned to make hard copies in a nice way. So let's see. So that we are taking up. Uh, the other point is sending the memento. We, we plan to send the memento along with the hard copies, but till that we have to keep it here. We have difficulties for overseas speakers, so we have to see yeah. what we, best we can do. So, it, so Tonishta uh, may, may make the. I, I think there is a photo of the memento that can also be shared here. Uh, not. I think it is the only the we have this one. We have this. Um, okay. Okay. Hmm. okay. Okay. Okay, so it will be uh, sent uh, to him by courier. Yeah, Sir, for what is because we have to, yeah, we'll be keeping in the department and uh, subsequently we, are, we have to find opportunity to deliver it to the Indian address or maybe we have to send via courier. Uh, so we have to look into that. But the certificate we have uh, just taken up, the soft copies will be sent now and hard copies we will be printing. And that will be sent along with the memento. Okay. So yeah, nice. thank you. So this is, and thank you, Professor Dotto, and thank you all the viewers thank here, including the students and the members of alumni. I mean, all are basically the strength of this uh, centenary celebration. Right? So with all of them, we should be able to proceed further and we should continue this lecture series. Uh, we, are, we already have covered six, so many more to come. We have already filled till uh, March. So up yes. till March end, we are already, it's all settled and other speakers are also getting lined up. So it's a great thing. And we are getting encouragement and support from our seniors, including Professor Ghosh, Professor Mullik. I mean, anytime I just approach them and I get the help. Yeah. So that's what we need to acknowledge. Thank you. Thank you our H thanks to H our HOD also, Dr. Sudip Ghosh. So he has been working relent relentlessly for this and making this a series of centenary lectures grand success so with permission uh, of of all of you so i mean i conclude this session here thank you very much thank you professor bishar thank you Thanks yes to all thank you. you sir thank you all the respected seniors all the uh, colleagues all the friends all the students no oh. professor one was also there yeah, Professor Wang, uh, I'm really, yeah, they just really like amazed mm -hmm. that he was. And uh, Dr. Hirono Deka was also there. He has been, you know, sending me you know, WhatsApp messages also. As he, uh, I mean, in this work, uh, you know, I presented a strong component from him. The, uh, what was his PhD work at IIT Guwahati? After that, mm -hmm. he went to France. He has now come back and joined uh, IIT Dharwa. So, thank you, sir. So, with your permission, with the permission of the chair, we would close the session and I request uh, Vidut to take it over and pass it on to the um, um, co-host. So, please proceed. Yeah.
Vidut, I, uh, I, you, hope, I hope I have passed the exam. <laughs> yes, sir, definitely, with full marks. <laughs> That's okay. So thank you very much, sir. Okay. Uh, Dr. Das? Okay. With this, we come to the end of our uh, sixth lecture of the Centenary Lecture Series. Hope to see you all next week at the same time. Thank you. Thank you.